cells need a way to get materials in and out. The barrier that controls the passage of materials is the cell membrane. Some materials can pass through the cell membrane on their own, but others cannot. To describe this, scientists say the membrane is semi-permeable which means that only some particles can pass through. There are two main ways that particles can get through the cell, passive transport or active transport. Passive transport requires no added energy, but active transport does require added energy. In passive transport, there are two basic ways that a material can move across the membrane. Nonpolar molecules like carbon dioxide and oxygen are soluble in lipids, so they can pass right through the phospholipid bilayer. Other molecules that are polar, like water, need to pass through a pore made by a transport protein to move in and out of the cell. So let's see why this movement even happens. The movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration is called diffusion. A concentration gradient is a difference in the concentration of molecules across a distance. Diffusion goes from high to low areas of concentration. Now, molecules behave just like you do when you're stuck in a crowded elevator. They want to get out to an area where there's more room. They have energy and they bounce around, and as soon as they can move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, they move. Now, there are three factors that affect the rate at which they move, and those are temperature, the starting concentration, and the size of the particles. Particles at a higher temperature, more extreme differences in starting concentration, and smaller sizes all tend to diffuse at a faster rate. The diffusion of particles will continue until they reach equilibrium, where the concentration of the molecules is the same throughout. Cell membranes aren't the only things that experience diffusion. It's happening all the time. Diffusion occurs when you put a drop of food coloring in some water. These particles are going from high to low concentration until they reach equilibrium. When a sugar cube dissolves in water, it's also experiencing diffusion, and will dissolve until all of the sugar cube is mixed throughout the water. Now, if we're talking about the diffusion of water, we give it a special name, osmosis. Water will still move from an area of high concentration of water to an area of low concentration of water. But this time, there are other things we need to pay attention to like the amount of solute in the solution. A solution is made of a solute, which is a solid that is dissolved in a solvent, which is a liquid. Together, the solvent and the solute create a uniform solution. Let's imagine I dissolved a packet of Kool-Aid powder into water. In this Kool-Aid solution, there are particles of Kool-Aid, which are the solute, and particles of water, which are the solvent. The water dissolves the Kool-Aid to create this solution. Now, unlike Kool-Aid, your cells have a membrane dividing the inside of the cell from the outside of the cell, so we have to be able to describe the internal and external environments. To do that, we'll use three different words to describe the different amounts of solute and solvent that we could come across. Hypertonic means that there are relatively high amounts of solute and low amounts of water. You can think of a super hyper kid and their high amounts of energy to remind you of the high amounts of solute in a hypertonic solution. Hypotonic means that there's a low amount of solute and high amounts of water, and isotonic means the solute concentrations inside and outside the cell are the same. Cells have water and solute inside of them, but they're mostly water. So they have a high amount of water and a low amount of solute. If I place the cell in a solution with a relatively low amount of water and a high amount of solute, the water will move from the region with a high concentration of water to a region with a low concentration of water. The solute may not be able to move, but we know that water can always move across semi-permeable membranes. So in this case, water will move from the left side to the right side until the concentration of water and solute is equal on both sides. That means it's flowing from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution. Let's try some specific examples. Here's a scenario with 20% solute on one side and 80% solute on the other. Be careful here. The solute won't move, only water will. So we need to calculate how much water is on each side. Subtract 20 from 100% and you'll get 80% water on the left side. Subtract 80 from 100 and you get 20% on the right. Water moves from high concentrations of water to low concentrations of water. So it will move from the left to the right in this case. Again, the movement is from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution. 
Now we have a 60% solute and a 20% solute scenario. First, let's figure out how much water there is by subtracting the amount of solute from 100. We have 40% water and 80% water. Water always moves from a high to low concentration of water, so it will flow from the right to the left. And again, that's from hypotonic to hypertonic. Let's do one more. Now we have 20% solute and 20% solute. Find out how much water there is by subtracting from 100, so we get 80, and 80 on both sides. It's equal. But just because it's equal doesn't mean there's no movement of water. In this case, water actually moves back and forth in equal amounts, keeping both sides isotonic. Now let's look at what happens when real cells are in hyper, hypo, and isotonic conditions. We'll look at human red blood cells. Normal cells look like concave disks, but when we place a cell in a hypotonic solution, the water rushes into the red blood cell and causes it to swell up. Sometimes it can even burst. If the cell is placed into a hypertonic solution, water will rush out of the cell and cause it to shrivel up. In an isotonic solution, water moves in and out at equal amounts, and the cell maintains its normal concave shape. So by now you may have noticed a pattern in the direction of osmosis. Water moves from hypotonic to hypertonic solutions. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.